The domain name system is the foundation name service in Windows Server 2016 operating system. So let's continue with the next video from the chapter with implementing DNS server. Hello friends, Nick from NLB Solutions here and today I'm going to show you how to install and configure DNS server in Windows Server 2016. For the purpose of this video I have two virtual machines, one is NLB Network 01 and um, I've uh, only used the NW so I can keep it short and the other server is my domain controller 01. So, as you know, when you install a domain controller in your environment, it automatically asks you to install the DNS server service. Um, this is because the Active Directory as a service works closely uh, with uh, DNS and it, the DNS is required for the Active Directory services to be resolved uh, um, by clients and by other services and applications in your environment. There are other services that depends on DNS, of course, like uh, different applications, both Microsoft and non-Microsoft. And um, you can understand from the picture I'm drawing here that DNS is really important uh, for your environment. And incorrectly configuring a DNS server can cause a lot of pain and a lot of applications not working, clients not able to resolve different names, both internally or externally on the internet. So it's really crucial for you to properly configure your DNS server. Let's start our demonstration by installing the DNS server role and you can do this from the uh, server manager of course or with PowerShell if you like uh, but in both cases you will be able to easily install the role and as I mentioned before the role is um, automatically installed if you prefer on a domain controller uh, when you install the domain controller but for this purpose I'm just going to install a clean uh, DNS role and in here we are going to check together what are the options uh, when configuring the DNS zone zones and uh, the DNS server in general what are the properties we're going to take a look um, uh, for uh, the DNS policies that were recently implemented and uh, I'm going to keep this short uh, just to to make a pretty much an overview of what is DNS because the uh, the DNS as a name resolution technique is really a complex thing. So after we have our DNS server installed I'm going to go to tools and open DNS and you can see that uh, currently I don't have anything configured um, for this DNS server, which is the NLB Network 01. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure a DNS server and a small uh, configure a DNS server wizard will appear. So I'm going to click next. And this is the first window I'm going to stop a bit to explain. So the first thing you want to know and understand is what is the difference between forward lookup zones and reverse lookup zones. So if I can explain with few words, the forward lookup zones are used to map host names to IP addresses and the reverse lookup zones are used to map IP addresses to host names. So for example, if you want to know where exactly is, for example, uh, www.microsoft.com, you will try to ping this IP address or try to open your browser and this will use your forward lookup zone and later uh, your DNS server to query where exactly is microsoft.com and will return the IP address. On the other hand, if you try to ping or try to open an IP address, if there is a reverse lookup zone, it will uh, find what is the host name. You can find what is the host name of the uh, application or the service that stands behind this IP address. 
So the first two options that you see right there are um, the first uh, option is to create a forward lookup zone only and this is used for small organizations that pretty much use uh, forwarders, uh, forwarders uh, that were provided by their ISPs and we're going to speak about forwarders uh, a bit later but uh, this is a simple and recommended for small networks. The second option is to create forward and reverse lookup zones and this will create a zone both that uh, using the forward zone you will be able to resolve host names and using the reverse zone will be able to resolve um, IPs to host names. Uh, so this is recommended for large organizations and this is a bit complex to configure. So if you are a um, using this as a test as a learning uh, environment you can create your forward lookup zone and on a later state you can create the reverse to see how it's done the third option is to configure the root hints only and the root hints basically what is uh, this is a list of 13 FQDNs um, that are basically the highest DNS servers on the hierarchy and when your uh, DNS server is not able to resolve a specific name for example uh, or the forwarder that uh, the DNS server is using is not able to resolve this name it will go to these 13 uh, servers I will show them uh, the list you you can modify this list, you can disable uh, this if you want. Uh, so for the purpose of this video I'm just going to keep things simpler and choose to create a forward lookup zone. And you can see that uh, the next one is the primary server location. So you have two options. The one is the first one is the server maintains the zone, and it will basically create a primary forward lookup zone. So what is primary forward lookup zone? So when a DNS server is both the host and the primary source for information about a certain zone. This, is, this zone is considered as primary for the DNS server. On the other hand, you have a secondary zone, and this means that the DNS server is the host, but is a secondary source for zone information. So what I mean by this is when I create my zone right now, it will create a primary zone and it will create a file in my system32 DNS folder and this file will contain all the zone information for uh, that is hosted on this DNS server. This is considered as primary but when I have another DNS server and I want to replicate the DNS information to this server for example I can add a secondary zone and basically this is a copy of the zone so this is not the primary host server that is hosting the, the zone. So these are the two options that you can see right here um, I'm going to select the first one because I want to create a primary zone that uh, I'm going to modify and configure the way I like it. So I'm going to name the zone as nlbsolutions.com and I'm going to click next and you can see that the next um, window will ask me if I want to create a new zone file or to use a file copied from another DNS server. So you have the two options and you can see that um, to use an existing file um, it's currently, it will be currently stored in the system root system32 DNS. So when I create this file it will be stored in this location. I'm going to click next. So the next window will ask me to configure the dynamic updates and what this means is basically when a computer or a server connects on the network, if, it's, if it is using DHCP for example, if you configure this to allow non-secure uh, or um, secure dynamic updates, it will, uh, the, the computer will register this IP address and the host name into the DNS um, server zone. So when another machine is trying to connect to this one it will use and it will find the record for the DNS for the um, computer or the uh, server. So you can configure um, secure dynamic updates 
and uh, this is this option is only available if you use Active Directory integrated zones. And what this means is when you install, as I mentioned before, when you install the, the Active Directory, it will um, ask you, it will prompt you to install DNS. And you can configure the zone to be integrated with Active Directory. So basically, it will use Active Directory to replicate zone information to other domain controllers in your domain. Uh, and as you understand, Active Directory and uh, replication is really secure mechanism. So it will allow you to um, only allow uh, secure dynamic updates for the uh, computers and servers in your domain. So for example, if uh, a rogue server connects or a rogue computer connects to my uh, domain, um, my Active Directory will not allow this uh, computer to register its information to uh, to my DNS uh, zone because what it can do is it can pollute the DNS and it can even uh, stop the DNS service from responding if it creates a, a huge amount of records that needs to be added. So I will uh, just choose the option to allow both non-secure and secure and uh, you can see that it's warning me that it can uh, be a vulnerability. But nevertheless, I'm using this in test environment. The next window will ask me to configure the forwarders. So this is a thing that I need to explain. So basically your DNS server will be your primary server uh, for resolving queries that are both internal and external. Um, and what will happen if uh, one of the clients tries to resolve Microsoft.com, which is an external to your domain. It will go ahead because if it does not contain this in, in any cache information, DNS cache, zone caching, it will go ahead and will contact the root um, hint servers uh, for to find where exactly is the Microsoft.com. And this is a, a process that you need to check uh, because uh, there is a difference between the queries in the DNS, uh, between uh, recursive and iterative, but nevertheless, it will contact the root hints and it will find this information for you. But if you configure forwarders, and most of the ISPs provide DNS servers that are internet facing, and uh, you can configure this ISP um, IP addresses or host names in here, and your DNS server will not contact the root hints. Instead, if a client tries to resolve Microsoft.com, it will send this information, it will send the, 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 the um, recursive query, it will send the query to the um, ISP DNS server that is configured in the forwarders. And the ISP DNS will try to find where is Microsoft.com and will reply to my DNS server and my DNS server will reply to the client. So in my case, I don't have internet access, so I'm not going to configure forwarders, but it's going to search now for root hints. So after it think about 30 seconds for the root hints, my DNS server uh, is complete. So you can see right here that uh, it's not able to configure root hints. Um, because uh, currently I don't have internet access, but nevertheless, I will show you the zone that we've configured. And uh, the next thing I want to speak about shortly is the records that you will see in your uh, zones when you in the forward lookup zone when you configure this. So the first two records that will be created when you configure a zone is the start of authority record or SOA and the name server NS record. So if I open the start of authority, you will see that uh, there is a lot of information about uh, this record and this is really important for the zone. So in this record, you'll be able to find information like um, the incremental number of the zone. You'll see the primary server that is hosting the zone, the responsible person, refresh, retry, and um, the uh, time to live interval. 
and this all can be configured from here so you can modify these values you can read more about it or if you have any questions you can specify them in the comment section but this is a, a lengthy video so i don't want to keep that much in here the next one is the name servers and this basically represents the servers that are responsible that are hosting the zone so you can add remove or even edit um name servers from here the next tab that i want to show you is the zone transfers so you can see that you have three options you can um if you allow the zone transfer you can only uh, allow zone transfers to servers that are in the name servers tab or only in a specific specific servers or to even any server which is uh, can be a security vulnerability so i recommend recommend doing only to the name servers tab and when you install a new dns server just add uh, to this one and replicate the zone if you want a secondary zone somewhere to copy the information other records that you can configure are um, you can see right here you can create a um, host a uh, record or quad a record for uh, ipv6 so let's uh, let us create a uh, fast record so for example i want to create mail nlb solutions and this is going to be my mail server which does not exist but i'm going to just add it as a test and i can just add the record and it configured the record in here so the next time when i try for example to ping cmd when i try to ping mail dot nlb solutions dot com it will not be able to resolve it right away but let me try to do an ip config flush dns and I will have to do another thing, which is going to be to add the DNS server in here, because currently it is not my primary DNS server. So I'm going to add another DNS server, which is my domain controller. And we'll flush the DNS once again, and we'll try to ping mail nlb solutions.com and you can see i don't have this server in my domain but it's looking into the dns server zone file and it's able to find the record for my mail server